So what do you what do you feel like now with the strategies for scaling? Let's just I mean, we specifically talk about Amazon here on the Amazon files. Sure. I mean, there's plenty of other e-commerce things we could you know discuss in other places. But with Amazon, knowing it's the biggest global online marketplace, um, you know, we know that most people, if not everyone, has heard of Amazon and uses it and is usually a prime member. Um, so when it comes to scaling in that respect, what have you seen has been working post pandemic? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is obviously going to be specific to a certain, you know, product category or, or a different strategy. As we said, we talked a little bit about, you know, the strategy that you've, you've taught people on bundling or is it private label? Are you reselling? I think there's some different answers to, depending on where you're playing. But I think there's some common elements, too. I mean, first of all, I think what we've seen is am the Amazon environment has gotten more competitive and more expensive for people looking to sell products on Amazon. Right. So I think one is understanding that and understanding that, you know, the, it's likely, likely, not always going to cost you kind of more and more to acquire a customer. Right. To acquire a customer's eyeballs. So what. So that means conver conversion becomes even more important than it ever was before, right? Because you're like, well, listen, you know, I, if I'm, I'm, most people, including the biggest companies, have some level of capital constraints. Like you can't just pour money into a hole forever and then eventually it'll work out. Like that's not typically, especially with small businesses, especially with, um, you know, especially businesses that are more like even side hustle type businesses. So you can't do that. So so conversion becomes incredibly important. I think, you know, focusing on conversion and making sure that you're fully optimized for conversion uh, is huge in scaling because you're, you're going to be probably acquiring less eyeballs for the same amount of investment. I think the other thing is what we've kind of seen a lot is that unfortunately, with some exceptions, um, things tend to have these shelf lives at, on Amazon and that they seem to be getting a, shorter and kind of shorter. So what that means is if you have a great SKU or a great product, you, you obviously need to try and maximize that, but you need to already plan that at some point you're going to crest, you're going to start to come down and you need to have that next thing right behind it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what I call, we call it sort of stacking opportunities. And that's a difficult, it's not an easy thing to do because you don't want to bail on a great uh, SKU or great product too soon, but it also you want to be always ready with that next, like in, use a stupid baseball analogy. There should be pitchers warming up in the bullpen for when your guy on the mound is starting to run out of steam and his arms getting tired, you need to be able to put the next guy in. And so I think that has become incredible. And whether regardless of, of strategy, regardless of, again, your private label reseller, doing bundles, whatever, that's another very critical component right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's only going to get more. So I just think Amazon, regardless of what happens with the lawsuit from the government, I don't, I don't know that it's going to get less competitive.